friends, welcome to the Bonnet Knits Podcast, episode 16. My name is Kayla and I am your host on this knitting, crocheting, and making YouTube channel. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me today. It is Monday, April 29th, 2024, and I have some knitting, crocheting, Tunisian crochet to share with you. So if that sounds good, just hang on out with me. I'm glad that you're here. Um, also, before we get started, if you want to follow me elsewhere on the internet, I can be found on Instagram as Vonderknits and on Ravelry as Kayla Vonderknit. Okay, let's go ahead and get into finished objects. Um, it's mostly baby stuff. I'm not expecting, but some people in my life are, as well as there's a charity going on right now that I wanted to make some baby things for. So we've got babies on the crafting brain. So we will start first with our finished objects. Um, first, we'll start with the socks for my sister. So they are lovely. This is Patton's Croy in the colorway Copper Canyon. Um, it is a nice marled yarn and it is a thicker weight yarn. Um, I knit these socks on a US size 2, 2.7 millimeter needle magic loop method and I cast on 64 stitches. I knit a two by two rib on the leg and the top of the foot and then on the bottom it was just stockinette stitch. Um, I believe I did 40 rounds on the leg. And then my heel flap gusset and then down the foot and then my normal wedge tail. So these are for my sister and I made them because I wanted her to have something warm and fuzzy and cozy. And I think she needs socks in her life. So ah, I hope she likes them. Also, usually my go-to project for when we're out and about or when we are at the gym for my kids is a pair of socks. But I have been making... So many ripple tops. <laughs> um, I think you saw this on my last episode. Sorry, there's hair on it because my kids have been wearing them and they won't let me wash them because they want to wear them. Um, this was the first one I made. It was Hawthorne from Knit Picks and it was kettle dye and I think the colorway was Rose City. But yeah, this is the Ripple Bralette pattern by Jessie Mae of Jessie Mae Designs, and I knit the smallest size. I omitted the ribbing at the bottom, and I just knit it longer so it would cover my daughter's torso. I knit the smallest size, and then I followed the straps instructions in the pattern, and it fits her so well. She loves to wear it while she sleeps, um, and it's super cute. I think it would be cute with like a pair of jeans and a denim jacket or something, but she likes to sleep in it. And I'm glad that she loves it. So I finished that one, or this one, and I immediately cast on another one for my son, but he hid it so he would remember where it was, and now we can't find it. <laughs> so he's, he's five, and he hides things so he remembers where they are, and only he knows where they are. But then they disappear. So anyway, I do have a picture. That one was knit in Yarnable subscription box, from December 2023 in the colorway Frosty Fox. Um, and if you don't know what Yarnable is, it is a subscription box where you can get yarn in every month and then a few other goodies. Um, I get the Plush Sock, which is an 80% Superwash Merino, 20% nylon. Yeah, so that was in Frosty Fox. And again, for him, I knit the smallest size of the Ripple Bralette. I omitted the ribbing at the bottom and then I knit it 12 inches up and then I started the um, decreases for the front. So after I finished that for him, I then cast on another for my daughter. And I do want to say all of these I knit on a US size four needle. Um, I think the pattern calls for a three, but <clears throat> I had a size four easily available. So I used size four. I knit a second one for my daughter. <laughs> um, this one's so pretty. It looks like fall. Um, I gave her a couple of skeins to choose from and she chose this color. So this is Malady. The colorway is Malady by Savvy Skeins. And it is a little bit of a thicker sock yarn. Um, I believe it's only 420 yards. But the colors are so good. Again, I knit this on a size 4. 
Uh, it's the ripple bralette pattern. I omitted the ribbing at the bottom, knit 12 inches, and then started the decreases and then followed the straps to pattern. I wanted to say something else. The smallest size, was that it? I think so. But yeah, I've just been, these are so quick to like knit up while we are out and about or while we're at the gym. And they're kind of mindless knitting until you get to like this part where you separate off the back. So I've been enjoying making these. The kids love them. They sleep in them. They wear them outside to play. So I like them a lot. I like them, like them. So, okay. So those were for my kids, the ripple tops. Then someone close to me informed me that they were expecting. So I make baby things when people are expecting. So I made a teeny little sweater. This is the flax pattern. I omitted the garter ridge at the top. There's fuzzies everywhere. I omitted the garter, <laughs> the garter ridge on the sleeves. Um, but I did use a big twist tweed in dark green and then faded it into cream, which I think is so sweet. I love that. I knit the smallest size of the flax pattern. I used US size eight for the body, then US size six for the ribbing and followed it to pattern. It's just the sweetest little sweater. This is acrylic as well, so it'll be easy to care for. You can wash and dry it. I love the flax patterns by Tank Hand Knits. That's what I knit for my kids most of the time um, and for gifts because it's just a nice straightforward basic sweater pattern. And I love Tank Hand Knits. All their patterns are so great and so easy to understand. So good. So that is a little flax sweater. Uh, so sweet, so good. And then I crocheted a stroller blanket. So let me back up. It's so lovely. The theme of my crochet life lately has been ripple blankets. So this is Michael's Karen Chunky Cakes in rice pudding. I had a ball left over from another project and then I picked up another ball and I think it used, hmm, I think it used like two and a half balls. I had like one ball left over and then like half a ball and then I picked up another cake and it like used almost all of it perfectly. But I used a US L, which is an eight millimeter crochet hook. And then I just did a ripple pattern. This is 100% acrylic as well, so it'll be nice and easy to care for. Um, and then the pattern I used was a 14 plus two pattern that I've used in the past. So I either, either, either started with 72 chains or 74 chains, maybe 76, whatever the, the division of 14 and then plus two would be. But yeah, a sweet little stroller blanket. And the rip, I love a ripple blanket. I am obsessed. Like the ripple blankets are some of my favorite blankets to make. But it's just such a good neutral. And it's nice and thick. So it's the chunky cake, which is the chunky yarn. And it just worked up so quick. Um, I believe it's 28 inches by 34 inches. So it's a stroller size. So good. I love this. It's so good. Uh, I took a picture of it to send to the recipient and I was like this is so pretty I'm like laid out and displayed so good so that is all of the finished objects for gift knits then I am working on a few blankets for Friday morning charity which is a charity that a few people locally to me um they seem to either work with or donate to and I was in a blanket mood, so I was like, why don't I just continue to make baby blankets? Um, this quarter's charity is the w Women and Children's Services. Hi, kitty. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it turned the computer and made it freak out. So, anyway, I wanted to donate a few blankets to the um, Women and Children's Services just to help people who might need some. So this is actually a Tunisian crochet blanket. Let me back this up. Oh, 
it's pretty. Oh, she's pretty. Oh, again, Chevroni ripple blankets are my go-to. So this is Tunisian crochet. I used a US size K six and a half millimeter Tunisian crochet hook. Um, the pattern is the Bahama blanket by Tony of TL Yarn Crafts. Um, and I believe in her pattern, it is a 50 inch wide blanket. Um, I scaled that back. So this blanket is actually 38 inches wide. And I Tunisian crocheted it 38 inches long. So it does need a little block because it's curling a bit on the ends as a Tunisian crochet does, <laughs> but it's so lovely. It was my first Tunisian crochet blanket. It's so great. I love it. It's so beautiful. And I really hope that it brings happiness to someone. Um, but yeah, so I scaled it back. I forget exactly how many stitches I started with, but it makes a 38 by 38 blanket, which is about the size of a receiving blanket. Um, I'm sorry, my daughter's Tamagotchi is going off. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, my daughter's Tamagotchi was beeping. Um, I don't know if anyone else grew up with Tamagotchis, but my daughter discovered them and she she's had me taking care of it while she's at school. So it was beeping. But back to this blanket, I did want to mention this is 100% acrylic yarn. It is a medium size four yarn. So it's a worsted weight yarn. Um, it is Michael's Caring big cakes. So it's not chunky, it's worsted weight, but it's a big cake. So it has extra yardage and the color is toffee brickle. To brickle to toffee brickle, something like that. Brickle toffee maybe, but it's kind of like a muted moody rainbow. It's really, I really like it. So yeah, this will be going out to Friday morning charity. And I actually have another blanket I'm working on for them. So that concludes works in progress. That was very fast. If you have any questions, let me know, but we will move into the second blanket that I'm working on for the Friday morning charity. It is in my Great Wolf Lodge iridescent waterproof bag. I love this bag. It's perfect for blankets. It's huge and it's waterproof. So anything spills, nine times out of ten it's going to be safe oh here's a tag for that yarn so we can know the actual color let me see Karen big cakes the color is toffee brickle <laughs> toffee brickle so yeah this is ten and a half ounces per cake it's 300 grams and it's 603 yards so that blanket hmm I bought four of this toffee brickle colorway and that used, what am I gonna know? They used like one and a half. So that's not too bad. So I am, well, maybe it was like one and three quarters. It was, um, yeah, it was pro more like one and three quarters because I had a bit left over when I started this blanket and I went ahead and started with the leftover from the first blanket. Anyway, ripple blanket. Da, 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 da. I'm telling you, I've been all about crocheting ripple blankets lately. That's all I want to do. Um, I actually started crafting when I was I mean, I like colored and cut paper and glued and stuff. But I didn't start like fiber arts crafting. Um, I started crocheting at 11 when my grandma taught me. And I started ripply little bags with buttons that I love to carry around. So the ripple goes strong and it goes deep in me. <laughs> but Oh, so good. So this is the same toffee brickle colorway. But I am doing a regular crochet ripple blanket i cast I, I keep saying cast on i chained 126 stitches for this i remember because i chained it not too long ago to start it so i am using what size are you us8 
USH slash eight, a five millimeter crochet hook. I'm using a five milli millimeter crochet hook. And I am just working on my way up. So this is a, a 14, again, a 14 plus two repeat for the ripples. The same pattern I used for the chunky blanket. This is a worsted weight blanket. It's the same as the Tunisian crochet blanket, but it's just got these pretty ripples. And it is 100% acrylic yarn, and it is going to be easy to care for. And this one I am making 40 by 40 inches. So all my blankets have been different sizes, but this one's 40 by 40, a true receiving size blanket. And I'm really hoping that I'll have a little bit extra so I can send matching hats in the same yarn, because I think that would be really sweet. So. I am just enjoying making this. I measured it last night and I'm at 27 inches. So about 13 more inches to go and then she will be done. And I plan on crocheting or knitting one more blanket to send off. Um, I think the donations end on May 20th. So I'm hoping that I will have enough time to get one more blanket out with this batch. Um, and it's the same big cakes from Karen from Michaels and I will um yeah I'll probably I'll either, maybe I'll crochet it too I'll do a ripple crochet it's different colors though it's um it's like an aqua gray cream colorway but yeah fingers crossed that I can get one more blanket out with that batch I think I can do it I yeah I think I can do it so all right last project we are stuck. Oh my word. Hang on. I got stuck. No. Okay. Get the needles out of here. This project is in my wool enemy number one moth bag from Knit Picks. I adore this bag. I really, I kind of want to get a moth tattoo. Oh, that would be so good. Yeah. I'm thinking a moth tattoo is in my future, but I've got the yarn caked up. And this little fox yarn cake holder. So this came in with the Yarnable December box with the Frosty Fox yarn. It also has this little Frosty Fox yarn cake holder. So I am making another ripple top. <laughs> um, cannot be stopped. It cannot be stopped. I am uh, working with Knit Picks, Hawthorne, Kettle Dye again. I don't know what this color is. I'll have to see if I have the tag in the bag. All of the other yarn for all the other projects I showed you, I threw the tags away because I'm trying to declutter my life. As you can tell by like the boxes by the couch there, we are going through stuff right now and we need to get rid of stuff, but I'm trying to declutter my life. So if it's done being used, it gets tossed. So this colorway is really pretty. I am making this for my niece. So instead of the smallest size, I'm making the second to smallest size. And I'm going to knit it 14 inches instead of just the, um, oh, I have all the tags in here. Oh, I thought I threw them away. Okay, so this is the Malady tag for the colorway. I'll show you. And this is the Frosty Fox from Yarnable. So I will pop a picture in. And this is what it was inspired by. Isn't he so sweet? So sweet. That does not help you with the pink colorway I'm working with though. Are you it? No, you're not. I don't think this one's Rose City. I'm sorry, I'll have to look it up, but it is so good. I believe this came in a fade kit that I was gifted a few years ago, but it's all alone. So I was like, it needs to be a ripple top for my niece. So yeah, the second to small size, I'm gonna knit it 14 inches long and give it a nice bath and soften it up for her. So yeah, so good. I am knitting this one on circulars, US size four. And then I think the other ones I knit on Magic Loops, three and a half millimeter. Yeah, the other few tank tops I knit on Magic Loop, but this one I just wanted to go around and around. So I pulled out my shorty circular set. This is the Chiaogu, the blue lace uh, sh shorty set. Yeah. I think that's everything. I need to find the blue tank top. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll put a picture up if I don't find it, but 
that's everything I've been working on. <laughs> it's quite a bit. Um, so reading, watching, we have been also reading quite a bit. We haven't been watching much. We've been turning friends on at night while we're just kind of like resting. But um, I have finished What Feasts at Night by T. Kingfisher. That was excellent. That followed the character from, oh gosh, I'm going to forget. What Something the Dead. I'm going to look it up. I can't believe it. I just talked about it. Why can't I remember what it's called? <laughs> what Moves the Dead. So the What Feasts at Night was like a companion book to What Moves the Dead. And it follows the same character from that story like the next year. It was a quick read. It was so good. The, it was like an atmospheric gothic -y, like rural village something bad's happening it was so good i loved it um and then i read iron flame by rebecca yaris i have feelings and opinions on it and it <laughs> and it's probably not what everyone else would agree with um It was not great. It was okay. <laughs> um, I There's a lot going on and simultaneously not enough going on, if that makes sense. And I'll leave it at that. It was not my favorite. Um, it took me a few tries to get into it. And then it actually had to go back to the library. So I read it in like two days. Um, it was not my favorite. I'll just say that. Um, and then I read A Demon's Guide to Wooing a Witch was like a fun romp. It's by a localish author, Sarah Holly, and it was just so cute. It was a demon who lost his memories and he was found by a witch who had beat him up like 12 hours previously, but he had amnesia so he didn't remember her and she was helping him and it was so good. It was so cute. I loved it. It was so fun. And um, I'm currently reading Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. So good. I am really vibing with the like, a character gets a letter that's a weird, disturbing letter from someone they either know or they're related to. And they're like, please come help me. And then they show up to where this person who sent this letter is. And it's like disturbing and something is wrong with the house in the environment and something is wrong with the people in the environment it's like the fall of the house of usher like that is my like niche of reading right now and it's so good i really like it so we're reading lots of horror my husband started reading throne of glass and he is almost done with crown of midnight and he cannot stop he cannot be stopped we took the kids to the park and the museum yesterday and he like carried the book around with him and anytime he had a spare like two minutes he was reading so I love that for him I'm loving being on the journey with him it's so good so yeah just lots of reading lots of reading and then making blankets for charity and making baby things so I think that's it I've been working more so I work several nights a week and then our kids have switched around their gymnastics stuff. So my son wants to be on a team. So he's working towards being invited to the boys team. My daughter has made a competitive team. So she starts three a days in a few weeks or three a weeks. What is it? She starts being at the gym basically every other day in a few weeks. So we're just busy. We are busy people. So that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. But yeah, I think that's all I have. That was very fast. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them below. Um, I know I kind of flew through all of my projects. Um, but yeah, I've been just making a lot of baby things and ripple tank tops. So <laughs> yeah, I hope that until we chat again, that you take care of yourselves, keep your cup filled and just take care of each other. Bye.